good afternoon and welcome to Little Like Hacks podcast. My name is Amanda and thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. It is Friday the 23rd of July 2021. It's the last day of term for myself at work um, and uh, most schools around the UK finished this week as well. So yay, school's finally out. Um, so yes, it's Friday afternoon. It, the weather is cooler than it has been for the last few weeks, thank goodness. I am recording in my little office in the garden. You can see I've had a bit of a switcheroo round. I'm hoping that the lighting is better this way, although it's a little bit weird. I'm kind of sat sideways on, on the sofa down here, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so yes, it's Friday afternoon, the weather is a bit cooler, it's been very hot over the last couple of weeks in the UK. Uh, I have been in this garden office a lot over the last week and a half, I'll explain why in a minute. Um, so anyway, yeah, my name is Amanda, I live in Derby, in Derbyshire, in the middle of, the, uh, middle of England. And I live here with my husband, my two teenage daughters who are 16 and 18, uh, my dog and my chickens. You can find me on Instagram as Little Lycac Yarn. You can find me on Ravelry as Lycac 66. Uh, you can email me if you really want to. You're more than welcome at littlelycac at gmail.com. And you can also find me on every last, fr uh, no, last Sunday of each month at Newark Market, their uh, artisan and pre loved eco market. So that's every last Sunday of the month. That's Newark in. Uh, in England. So yes, um, I'm a teacher, so it is the end of term. It has been such a long term, such a long year for everybody, um, been very, very difficult at times. Um, talk a bit more about that, I think, later. Just very quickly what I'm wearing, because I might not keep this on, because it felt a lot cooler in here today, and I've had the door open in here all day, and I've been wearing this in here and it's been absolutely fine. Now I've closed the door so that I can podcast in peace and quiet. The temperature is going up, up, up and I put the lights on as well and it's warming up in here really, really quickly. So I suspect I will cut and take uh, this uh, sweater off um, at some point. Um, so what I'm wearing is a sweater that I knitted, um, finished it last year. It was one of those ones that I had, um, it hibernated for a while. So I started it in 2018. Um, and I had planned on, I knew I didn't have enough yarn to do long sleeves on here. I'd planned to do three quarter sleeves, but I didn't have quite enough yarn to do that. And so then I had to frog the sleeves and then you know what it's like, it got put away and forgotten about because I couldn't be bothered, it got put in time out basically. And then last year I joined in on a um, finishing off whips, getting out um, um, old projects sort of kind of make along and dug it out and sorted it out and finished it off. And I really like it. It is um, a King Cole pattern. I do use quite a lot of commercial patterns as well as indie patterns. Um, so this is a King Cole pattern. I've got the number somewhere. King Cole 4802. I have done it as well in a, um, a sort of a creamy, creamy oatmeal-y colour uh, in full sleeves. Um, and I liked it so much that I did it again, say, in this. And the wool I've used is an L Pure New Wool uh, double knit. I think it's discontinued. Surprise, surprise, it was something out of my stash. Um, I have got more of that uh, wool stashed away in, I want to say, like a stone colour and a more sort of a more bluey purple. And I'm thinking of using that for a colour work sweater this winter, actually. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing, little short sleeved um, sweater, but as I say, it is now feeling very warm in here, so it'll probably be coming off. Uh, at some point, it was, it'll suddenly cut to me in just the plain white vest top that I'm wearing underneath it, I think. Firstly, before I do anything else, again, thank you so much for all the lovely, lovely messages I had after my podcast from two weeks ago, where I told you about the accident my father-in-law had had and how we'd had a very, very worrying time um, waiting for him to have an operation and waiting for the operation to be a success, which it was. He is back at home. Thank you so much for everybody who contacted me and sent me your best wishes and regards and just gave me that bit of love that I needed. Um, he is back at home. He is recovering. It's, you know, going to be a slow process. Um, and obviously, you know, he's not fully recovered, but 
it's amazing actually what a recovery he has made. Um, I haven't been able to go over and visit him. I'll explain what I'm, I may as well explain this now, hadn't I? Um, but I haven't been able to go over and visit him still. But my husband and um, daughters, his granddaughters, have been over to see him a couple of times, which is great. The reason I've not been able to go over is because last week, last Thursday morning, I was at work. I was at school eight o'clock in the morning, half seven in the morning, and I got um, a notification on my phone from the NHS COVID Track and Trace app, which if you don't live in the UK is a government um, funded app that was set up to try and help people know if they've been in contact with somebody with COVID um, and if you get a notification. It's not legally binding, partly because they can't make it legally binding, but you know, it, it is your moral duty, your civil duty to then self-isolate for the time it tells you on the app. Um, and so it came up on mine that I had been in contact with somebody probably the day before by the looks of the, the amount of time it gave me um, and that I had to isolate for nine days. So literally I was in work, I had to contact my manager, um, leave it, um, sort out my lessons and then come straight home. Excuse me, and I haven't left the house and garden since since that time. So that was last Thursday, it's now Friday the following week. I am allowed out from midnight tonight. I don't think I'll be going out at midnight tonight. Um, but I cannot wait to get out tomorrow. I, the last couple of days have been really hard. It's been really frustrating um, because at this, that has coincided with Freedom Day, as some people dubbed it. Though that has coincided with all the restrictions pretty much in England being lifted. Now, again, I wasn't planning on going out and partying, but we were planning on, uh, well, things like it was my daughter's prom. Thank goodness she had her prom. Um, but uh, normally the parents seems to be a local tradition or a tradition in the UK that um, the parents, you know, all watch the girls and the children, their, their sons and daughters get out of the cars um, and arrive at the prom venue in all their dresses and you admire all their dresses and the suits and sometimes even fancy cars. I don't think people were bothering with fancy cars and things like that this year because obviously we didn't even know if proms were going to go ahead. I know we only um, got Amelia's dress fairly short notice compared um, and you know we didn't spend as much money as perhaps we, which was, I wasn't complaining but um, because we just didn't know if things were going to be cancelled whether it was going to go ahead but anyway I did get to see her obviously uh, at the house. I did go out the front of the house to wave her off but I didn't get that thing of actually seeing her arrive and seeing her with all her friends and all their beautiful dresses. Still, I know people have had to sacrifice worse. Um, then the other thing is, it is actually our 25th silver wedding anniversary uh, on Tuesday coming up, the 27th of July. And originally, the first plan before COVID hit, the first plan uh, is our daughters wanted to throw a party for us. They wanted to organise a family party, which would have been lovely. And that was going to be this weekend. And then this time last year, we said, that's just not likely to happen. And even if restrictions are okay. So we, we kind of even knew a year ago that we kind of said, well, if restrictions have lifted and I think, you know, so many people have had their weddings cancelled, that venues are going to be booked up with weddings and things. We, we won't have a party. Um, but we had decided to go away. We were going to go away to Manchester, um, city not too far away from us, just have a couple of nights. Um, go out for a nice meal. My husband had booked us a meal at a really nice restaurant. Uh, we were going to go and do a gin distillery tour. I do like gin, so I was looking forward to that. And the plan had been that we would have been leaving. We've got a train booked for this afternoon, this evening. It's um, half three now as I'm recording this. We would have been on the train probably about five o'clock tonight. So when the app pinged and told me I needed to self-isolate and it said I had to self-isolate to midnight tonight, I was like, well, I really can't go on the train then on Friday afternoon evening. And I know some people would say, yes, you could, yes, you could. <clears throat> but I just, just morally wouldn't have felt right, especially going on public transport as well. And I know it would have been literally the last six hours. And what's the difference between going at midnight and going at six o'clock in the evening? But morally, it didn't feel right. And we, we weren't 100% sure, if I'm really honest as well, we weren't 100% sure ourselves about going on public transport still. We didn't know how busy everything's going to be now that everything's opened up. So we cancelled, we just cancelled the weekend. 
Um, so yes, this, you would think as well that would mean that I've had a lot of time to knit, which I guess I have had more time to knit because I haven't been going to and fro work. I have been working. I've been back to working, trying to teach lessons on Teams. The difference this time being I've been at home, the students have been in school. And so literally my, uh, so somebody else, another teacher, cover teacher goes in and logs onto the computer. So there is a member of staff in the, the classroom with the students. The camera is pointing to the students in the classroom so I can see them, they can see me in the office. And um, I teach the lesson from there. Um, yes, um, we're gonna go out for a meal tomorrow night anyway, just in, in Derby. And uh, we're gonna go out again on our anniversary on Tuesday. So we are gonna go out a couple of times. Go out for afternoon tea and maybe cocktails on Tuesday night. But it wasn't the weekend we had planned. But there we go, like I say, I know other people have suffered far worse things than we have. Okay, so I'm 10 minutes in and I haven't talked about knitting yet, which is really bad. This is a knitting podcast, honestly, I promise you, it is a knitting podcast and a little bit of crochet sometimes and yeah, knitting and crochet is mostly what I do. Um, so I'm going to start the knitting part of the um, podcast now then. And I'm going to start with finished objects and I do have some finished objects to show you. Um, so because of the weather and it's been really really hot I have focused a lot on cotton projects because working on wool has been quite hard work my hand, hands have been warm and sweaty and your fingers get a bit sticky so I focus but luckily I knit in cotton as well so I've got a co couple of cotton projects on the go which I finished the first one um I had I had cast this on last time I saw you I'd only just cast it on I think I only got a little bit done one sleeve and then cast on the front of the dress and it's the dress for my one-year-old uh, I was gonna say niece's daughter but my niece isn't one my niece's daughter is going to be one in the middle of August and so I have knitted for her this dress so yeah, last time I saw you, I had done the one sleeve and I think I had just done the front. Actually, no, just a few rows of one of the back pieces. So yeah, you can see it's kind of like a tunic style. I love the little pockets. My niece likes to dress her in quite strong colours. Um, she says her daughter, when she gives her a choice of picking out clothes out of a drawer or whatever, goes for quite strong colours. She likes stripes, she likes rainbows. Um, she doesn't like to dress her in too much pink either. But uh, So I think I've got, hopefully I'll get away with this. So yes, I thought by putting the pink pockets on, it would kind of bring it together. I could, did have enough yarn that I could have done all of it in this teal, but I've got the, this, um, in my stash, I've got kind of leftovers of this um, pink uh, cream and um, mint green cotton. So I thought, oh no, I'll use that for the, um, for the sleeves. And then you can see on the back, I've used uh, buttons in different colors, the dark pink, the lighter pink and the cream again, which I think I'm really pleased with that. Actually, I think it looks really nice. So that is for my little great niece uh, for her first birthday. We are going, fingers crossed we are going away a week on Saturday or a week on Sunday next weekend so not this weekend next weekend we are going away down to the west country uh, not too far about an hour or so from where they live um, and so we will be seeing them at that point um, um, when we're down there for the week we will get to see them which will be lovely we were lucky enough to see her baby last year when restrictions were eased a bit last August we went down and we saw uh, baby Bryony and she was only about 10 days old, I think. And we couldn't hold her, we couldn't go in the house. We just saw her from a distance um, through the patio windows. So it would be really lovely. I suspect we still probably won't get too close to her. Um, we might still sit, we're gonna probably meet outside, I would think. And we'll probably still sit a far away because uh, my niece, uh, um, Bryony's mum is still quite vulnerable i'm not sure if she's classed as clinically vulnerable but she's relative she's been jabbed you know we've all been vaccinated but i think we will still keep some kind of social distance anyway so yes that is bryony's dress and uh it's a lovely teal the yarn is all sardar pure, pure cotton this the stripey uh, well the stripes the cotton i used for stripes was sardar and this is more of a mercerized cotton i don't know it's kind of like a tighter twist 
and then the teal was also cider cotton 100% cotton I think this was an older one looking at the kind of the ball bands um, don't know where I got it from probably bought it second hand in the first place off of somewhere like eBay and then it's been sat in my stash for a while um, so that one isn't mercerized uh, maybe feels a little bit softer than the sleeves but it will all be really soft when it's washed up um, so yeah Brian oh and the pattern again it was a um, I bought the pattern I have brought the pattern down I'm sure I have yeah it's a King Cole pattern I really like King Cole patterns at the moment actually so that was the pattern so it's King Cole 4203 and as I say I did it in cotton so it's got the dress the pattern obviously they've got pattern for the little leggings and actually you can kind of reverse the dress like and do it as a cardigan um so there you go first finished object to show you then another finished object I've got quite a few oh, now I'm gonna have to get up to get one of them in a minute because I've left them over there I'll cut I'll cut it so you don't have to see me get up and walk across it in a minute right but the second finished object you may have seen this on Instagram uh, because I was very proud of this and put it up on Instagram very quickly so this is finished So this is my daughter's school jumper, as I named it. Um, this I started back in January. It got started, then it kind of hibernated for a month or two while I worked on some other projects, and then I came back to it. And then the last couple of months, I've been working really hard on finishing it. Um, I was kind of doing half an hour each morning, just sort of like five or six rows each morning, because the cable pattern is not an easy pattern to remember the cable on this really quick really simple it's just a four row repeat uh or four row repeat on this and maybe in i don't know an eight or six row repeat on this bit so this was fairly mindless I, I like cables as you can tell this was quite an easy quick bit and it's only got that one panel of cabling at the front there's no cabling on the back this was something like a 36 row repeat so you, you never got to you know i had to read the pattern every single line um and you've got bobbles in there and it's cabled on the back as well thankfully i went with a pattern that did have a plain sleeve i had considered doing a pattern which had got cabling on the sleeve or was moss stitch on the sleeve but luckily <laughs> yeah i did go with a pattern that had plain sleeves so this is for my 18 year old it is called her school jumper because the yarn that i've used is serda well it's actually um sublime which is Serdar's um, luxury range. Sublime Sawyer cotton in this really nice, quite nice royal blue. Um, and originally I had bought a job lot of that yarn off of eBay uh, because my daughter had eczema and uh, acrylic sweaters and cardigans and jumpers irritated her skin. So I used to knit her school jumpers and cardigans in this cotton and uh, I bought a whole load of it off eBay um, because I think it was I think it was seconds quality and sure enough there was a lot of knots in some of those um, in some of those balls and so I'd managed to buy it quite cheaply used some of it to knit cardigans for her and then the rest had just been hidden in the pile at the bottom of the stash so I got it out and used some of it I've still got nine balls of it left which I think I'm now just going to put on Facebook selling site to, to get rid because I am trying to use my stash or give my stash away or sell my stash uh, and so some of it at the moment where I've got sweat, sweater worth uh, quantities what I've been trying to do is use up um, some of that um, knitted sweater and then what I've got left goes um, so I had I knitted a big green cardigan earlier this year that I, I held the yarn double and it used about five balls of each yarn which meant I had about, still had about five balls of each yarn left and I thought I don't think I want to do another project in those and so I sold those on, on the Facebook so that's probably what will happen with the rest of that sublime soil cotton unless anybody wants it <laughs> wants to buy it if you want it message me and uh, <laughs> you pay for the postage and not a lot else all right okay so that and then my other finished objects i will have to go and get so so yes if you've been watching the podcast um since it started i've been working on a throw um and my plan was to knit two squares per month so that i would do 24 over the year because it, the pattern is designed 
for advent calendars so that you would use 24 mini skeins. So I've done three squares since I last saw you two weeks ago, which is brilliant because that means that is my, that means I am caught up and I've completed my goal for our Christmas in July make along. So the three that I have done this month or this fortnight since I last saw you, and I've even been blocking them. I'm a bit over blocked. Like, oh, it's just. Uh, um, okay, yes, yeah, so I've been blocking these today. Actually, I've blocked fourteen of these today. So, block one, two, and three. So three of these completed in the last couple of weeks, which means I've got fourteen done in total. Which means I am up to date. Um, I said as well, I'd like to try and get ahead. I can't at the moment because I haven't got any other for. <clears throat> four ply fingering weight yarn um, to put into it because um, the idea of these is that I'm trying to use um, leftovers from projects that I've done this year so that at the end of the year it's kind of like a memory blanket as well so even though I have got other 20 gram minis that I could put in or 20 gram leftovers from projects from another year I'm really trying to keep this just to a 2021 project if I can so this one though the yarn, this yarn was actually, you can see the background here, my summer sorrel, which I finished last uh, time. Um, that's the pink from the bottom of there. It was a mystery yarn that I got in a D stash pile. Uh, it didn't have a label on it. Beautiful bright colours. I think it bled slightly though when I washed it actually. Um, all the water went very, very slightly pink and I think it was on that yarn. This yarn also from the top of my summer sorrel and that's a Ducky Darlings yarn. I've still got quite a bit of that one left actually. So that's a Ducky Darlings yarn and that's at the top of my sorrel um, and I think it's a Polworth mix. So, And then this one had been used in my V-back tea um, which you saw me knit in the first few episodes of my podcast. I was knitting on that so if you want to see that or see any of the details do check back and look on um, I think probably episodes one and two I was knitting on that, maybe episode three it was a finished object. Um, I've also put this yarn into the heels, cuffs and toes on my husband's socks that I've knitted, uh, done a square on there and I've still got maybe 10-15 grams left as well so it'll probably go into one of my other scrappy blankets. Um, and that one was hand dyed yarn i think the base of it was something like trex and then um been hand dyed and again been sitting in my stash a long long time so three squares done on that yay which means i am up to date on my um christmas in july make on just throwing these squares across the room now so that i can reach my other things to show you right okay so yes three finished objects or five if you include those squares as three separate ones which cheating a little bit um right so on to works in progress well because i've got quite a lot finished there's only one other thing that i was working on last time i saw you that i haven't finished um and that is everything else is new cast ons so that is the mondo cable vest um which i am knitting in the jaeger extra fine merino aaron in this beautiful raspberry pink and when I saw you last time, I'd only got a couple of rows started on this. I worked on this uh, for a few days straight after the last podcast because it was another one that I really wanted to get some work done. And then when the hot weather hit, oh my goodness, again, it was just one of those. It's quite thick. It's an Aran weight yarn. It's 100% merino. It's lovely and soft, but it's, it was too hot to be around merino wool. Um, but I have got... Let me show you what I've got done. It's a bit of a strange construction. It will go all in the round, uh, but we're not at that point yet. Although, so, we've got the back started. So you have to do a provisional cast on. That's the provisional cast on there. Then we need so much of the back. It's got some nice shaping actually, nice edging. Kind of like an I-cord edging, I think. Then, started on picked up the provisional cast off cast on sorry and gone down the front and now i've just started the second front 
So you will see what will happen is once I've done the front here, it will then join in the round um, under the armholes and then start it have a cable running down the front. So I was making really good progress on that and thought, oh, that's going to knit up really quickly. And then the hot weather hit. And yes, it's not been looked at the last 10 days, really. Because um, we were talking 30 degree heat, which I know isn't that hot for some people in some countries. But in Britain, we don't get weather that hot very often. A few days a year, I'm going to say more of those uh, years now the way we get a few days of 30 degree heat but it still is only a few days but I would say climate change does mean that is happening every year now that we get a few days at that heat but it is only a few days so you know we don't invest in air conditioning spend lots of money on air conditioning because we don't need it for 360 days of the year um so that's why I've been working mostly on cotton projects okay just gonna have I've forgotten I've got my half a cup of coffee here still and my gorgeous mug if, it might, if I make too many slurpy noises, I'll edit it. Um, so that's kind of my only work in progress um, that I've been started last time I'd thought, seen you. Um, I've got quite a few new cast on so in the last couple of weeks. So July socks, got started on these. And again, was making really good progress. Not touched them for the last week in this real hot weather. I might try and pick these up again now. Um, don't know that they'll get finished in July because the pattern's not the quickest of patterns. <clears throat> the pattern is the Scribbly Gum Socks by Helen Stewart from Curious Handmade. And the yarn, let's see my yarn cosy here. The yarn is from Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit. Got it last summer. Um, I think it was in their sale last summer. I think the colourway is called Doors. And this is the design. And I'm not far off the toes. I think I've got about another another inch, maybe two inches, and then I'll be on the toes of the first sock though. So it's the 23rd of July today. I'm not sure that I'm going to get this and a second sock finished in the time that I've got. Don't know. If I work on it fairly monogamously, then yes, but we all know what happened last time I tried to do that, don't we? And I am back at the market on Sunday. So do I take these? I don't know that I would take these anyway because they are not vanilla socks. I've got to concentrate and look at every row um, for the lace panel part anyway. So, But uh, I will take some knitting with me. I've got to take some knitting with me to do while I'm at the market, but Obviously what happened last time, if you don't know, check my last podcast. Um, yeah, I don't want to end up losing anything again. So Scribbly Gum Socks, they are, it's a nice pattern, but as I say, I do have to concentrate a little bit on the lace panel. Um, again, it's not one that comes naturally to me. Um, I check what I'm doing each row. It's not too difficult. And um, now something else. That I, I had actually started these last time but didn't show them. They're not very exciting, <clears throat> but it was something else that I'm doing for the Christmas in July make along. And more cotton in my stash. And uh, I decided I wanted to crochet some cotton wool puff pad type things for my. Uh, for my daughters for their stockings. I normally buy them a full pack, you know, some packs of cotton wool pads to go in their stockings at Christmas. And this time I thought I would make them some reusable ones. Um, I've got, this one's broken actually. I know, and there is a real, there's a real irony here. I did not think this through. My thought was I would get a nice little container for them to have these pads in, They're a bit small for these anyway. Um, and then when they arrived, I ordered three, one for me, one's cracked anyway but also then I thought I can't believe I've just ordered something horrible and plastic and actually a bit crappy if I'm not totally honest uh, for them to put something that's recyclable and supposed to be environmentally friendly in something plastic there you go I didn't think that through did I 
So, and also I think I didn't show them to you last time because I couldn't do the pattern. I was really struggling. It's a really, really simple pattern. It is crochet. Um, and it's these puff stitches. I could not get it to work. And I had a meet with my knit group um, on the Saturday, um, actually that my last podcast went up, um, that same day, my knit group, uh, we used to meet in person every week before the pandemic um, in a cafe. We've been meeting weekly still on Zoom through uh, lockdowns and everything. And now we've just done two um, meetups in the park. So we're still outdoors. Um, we've done two of those and we're doing those once a month, which is lovely. Um, and one of my friends, Kate, at the, um, in the group, she is very good at crochet. Um, so I took it with, her, with me and said, Kate, can you help me please? Uh, so she helped me sort out my puff stitch and what was going wrong and things. Um, so we got that sorted. So I've got, and I've not put these on Instagram um, or anything because my daughters do follow me on Instagram. Not that this is a very exciting thing for them anyway, but you know, I want there to be some surprises. So the plan was to do some in white and some in the blue, give one to one daughter, one to the other daughter. So that's another kind of quick and easy project I'm getting cotton. So I might take this with me to the market because I'm not being funny. I'm hoping I don't leave anything behind this time. Um, but if this got left behind, it really would not be the end of the world like it was over the socks. So that's probably what I'll take to the market. And it fits in because the market is described as artisan, pre-loved and eco. So they try and um, they have some, you know, um, Environment, environmentally friendly products there so perhaps that will fit in there as well right where are we up to looking at the time so crochet cotton pad ah yes one more thing then so when I did my make nine I said that I had like a summer top that I was planning on doing but I couldn't find the pattern for it or, <coughs> I still didn't find the pattern but I decided to use the yarn for something else that's the wrong bag this is the right bag so bit of a story to this it's always a story isn't there so a few years ago I had knitted most of this cardigan and I think this had come from a um, this was a free pattern in a magazine and I quite liked the pattern and it's charted bizarrely and I've knitted nearly all of it it's a bit of a bizarre pattern but I've knitted nearly all of it and I had just got to do the um, cuff round the sleeves and possibly the button band although the button band might all be part of it I think all I've got left to do is the cuffs around the sleeve and I could not work out what the pattern was telling me to do just could not work it out could not work it out and then I um, got fed up with it and shoved it in a bag and shoved it in the back of the cupboard and forgot about it and I kept thinking oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna frog that I'm gonna frog that and I was gonna knit another kind of lacy um, t-shirt with it and I'd got the pattern for that that was in a magazine as well I can't find where I've put it I took it out because the plan was I was going to knit knit that pattern so I took the pattern out of my files uh, my folders and I have no idea where it is so <laughs> then I saw some other sweaters coming up on Instagram that I like the look of I quite like the lacy yoke patterns and I thought oh I really like these and I looked at a few and the designs I mean they're indie designs and I, I and I know the work that goes into knitting, uh, designing patterns I've designed and published two patterns myself just very very simple sock patterns and they you know took however long to to write up and to get tested and I would imagine with full garments it's an even longer process. So I do understand why indie patterns are more pricey. But I've not knitted anything in the round yoke like that for myself before. And I'm a little bit wary about it because of my body shape. Um, so I thought I would have a look though to see if I could find maybe a pattern either free or a bit cheaper and have a go at a, like a lace yoke pattern and see whether I think it suits me or not um, and then if I like it and it does you know if that sort of style does suit me 
then I might actually buy some of the um, some of the other ones. So this pattern, and I don't think this pattern looks great on this particular model anyway, I think this jumper is, this sweater is too big for her. So I'm hoping it would look nicer on me because I will fill, out, fill it out better than, it, than her. So that is the pattern and it is a free pattern. It's from Yarnspirations, which I hadn't heard of before. And the pattern is, I found it on Ravelry, through Ravelry, but then it's the website that you go to. Uh, Yarnspiration website so I will link the Yarnspiration website uh, for the pattern rather than through Ravelry um, and there's nobody no projects yet on Ravelry so that's the pattern I'm doing as I say I think I think that that lace yoke is nice and then the yarn that I'm using so as I said I frogged or I started frogging the cardigan pattern and it's in this green and I'm not sure anyway that this would be that summery because uh, it's quite thick actually but this is the yarn that I'm using it's a Lana Grosser so it's called Linea Pura from Lana Grosser and it is something like 85% cotton, 15% milk protein. I you know, it's a bit weird. I've got a couple of yarns that have milk protein in them. Don't know if they still do it, but I think it was again something, um, well, it's obviously not vegan. It's not, <laughs> it's a wool alternative, but it's not vegan, is it? But anyway, so um, that's the yarn. And I'm now thinking it's more of an autumn color than spring color, uh, than summer color anyway. So I'm thinking that might be quite nice for autumn. This was the cardigan that was mostly complete. Um, and I pulled two balls of yarn off it. Yeah, look, even I've done all the front. I had done all the back, but now I've put, but anyway, didn't like it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be honest, I'm enjoying the knit because it's quite quick and the cotton is quite nice to work with. I'm still not. I'm not 100% sure. Do you think this colour's going to suit me? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. But that's why. That is why I decided not to pay £8 for a pattern. Um, that I'm really not sure whether I'm going to like it or not. Um, and just get a free pattern and test it out. And then if I think this shape suits me, this style suits me, then there's lots of lovely yoke um, cable. Not cable colour work or lace yoke that I might uh, try. So I've got this much done, you've got short rows at the back. You can never tell, you can never really see lace work when it's, yeah, that's not bad. And the colour is coming out quite well, that's quite true. It's perhaps <coughs> showing a little bit more lime on the camera than it is, it's perhaps a bit more of a foresty green I'm <coughs> sorry in true light coming out a little bit more lime green on the can on the camera it's a little bit more autumnal and forest green I would say than it's actually showing so yeah I started that jewelry is out on it but I don't think uh, so once I've got the lace done the lace section done on that that's going to be a lot of stocking stitch so it should be an easy knit to do so that is the lace yoke tea. I'll we'll say I will link to the pattern website. And there's lots of other patterns on there. Um, quite a lot of free patterns on there. Right, those are all my works in progress. Acquisitions. Um, I meant to show this last time as well, actually. I think I bought them just before I podcast last time. Um, so I'm trying not to buy too much in the way of yarn. Uh, at the moment because I've got a big stash and uh, I dye my own anyway and sell my own so um, but what I do I do like a bargain and I love charity shops I love having a wander around charity shops uh, clothes accessories things for the house um, and it's always worth having a look the, the pink the Jaeger uh, Merino Aaron that I'm knitting that um, cable vest in that yarn was from a charity shop 50p a ball it's going to cost me four pounds 
I think they're eight or fifty p. Yeah. Um. So four pounds the wool for uh, you know hundred percent merino Aran wool. Um. So it's always worth looking, and it's always worth asking about needles as well because they can't keep in the UK. They can't keep their needles out on display. They have to be um, in the back because they could be used as weapon. Um, so it's always worth asking uh, to have a look at their needles. Right, so I'm going to show you what I picked up at the charity shop a couple of weeks ago. Hang on. So they actually put this on their Facebook page, my local charity shop, because and they made the point that they couldn't have these out on display, but uh, they had these donated. And it was a full set of bamboo needles. Um, Kath Kidston, um, wrap here and I, I'm assuming the needles themselves were Kath Kidston. Uh, I think there's a couple of extras in here as well actually I don't think they were part of the original set by the looks of it. Um, so yeah and I do like wooden needles, I like bamboo needles and I do use straight needles sometimes and I do like wooden um, so yeah a really nice set of full set of bamboo needles and they go down from what have we got here three mils up to six and a half mils so and I think it was four pounds for that full set of needles and I just thought the case was really lovely as well so very happy with that and then they said did I want to look at the patterns because they've got the patterns away as well rather than out on display so I said oh yeah go on then and she brought through this massive pack of patterns and said they were 50p a pattern so I was like okay let's have a look so I do say I like Sardar patterns, so I like that. In fact, I did consider that um, I've got some 100% bamboo, and I thought I'm having trouble understanding right now. Please try a little later. Okay, sorry, set off my smart, smart speaker. Um, I thought that calico was 100% uh, bamboo, but it's not. It's a cotton blend. But anyway, I do like that top. That's a nice summer top. Um, that is a cotton cardigan, again Sardar, really old pattern this one, but I do like, as you know, I like my cables, and I like v-neck for myself as well, and sometimes it's quite hard to find v-neck um, cable patterns, so <laughs> I love this though, I paid 50p for this, it was 20p when it was new, look, and I paid 50p for it, so it's gone up in value amazing Woolworths let me see if I can find a date uh, I can't see a date on this anyway it's got to be 1970s hasn't it amazing um cute little couple of cute little baby patterns friends have babies or grandbabies or my niece has babies so it's always useful to have baby patterns I do like these dungarees they're really cute um, yeah, super cute and nice little dress or little top. Yeah, and I also I love the fact that you pay 50p, even if you paid full price and paid what three pounds, you've got you know two or three garments. I like that. And then this one is obviously out of a magazine, but I think this is lovely and it's a Martin Story pattern. And I do like Martin Story. I showed you a whole book of Martin Story patterns the other week actually. So I really like that. Cables again, I'm really into my cables aren't I at the moment. Lace and cables, love them, love them. Um, so yeah, so 50p each for those patterns, £4 for the roll of um, needles. Bargain, so those are my acquisitions. Right, okay, I suppose I ought to talk a little bit about our make-along. I'm at 45 minutes and I've only just got to the make-along. That's a bit rubbish, isn't it? All right, so our Christmas in July make-along. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The last couple of weeks this has really exploded and I've been delighted. So many, uh, we've got quite a few people in the Ravelry group now and quite a few people on the Ravelry thread. And um, so do pop by on there and post a picture on there if you're not on Instagram. Um, then use the Ravelry thread and the Ravelry thread you can have a bit of chat and see what other people have posted feel free it's not a chat free um, thread it, you know so please feel free to chat on it and post uh, photos of your projects as you go 
we are going to run that make along until the 7th of August because I'm actually going to be away on holiday the first week of August and I'm not going to pull prizes or anything like that while I'm away because I won't be able to post them so I'm going to keep the make along open until the 7th of August I get back on the 7th I will pull the prizes I will click well I'll shut the threads on that day and then I will pull the prizes and draw um, um, record a podcast probably on the Sunday so my next podcast will be a day or two later it won't go out on the Saturday morning like it usually does it will probably be the Sunday um, so I will um, close the threads um, and draw prizes from there and from the hashtag on Instagram so the hashtag on Instagram to use is LL Christmas in July M A L which stands for Little Lycac like, like Christmas in July Make Along. So post and tag any uh, projects that you want to enter for the Make Along in the, um, onto Instagram or post them into the Ravelry thread, okay? Um, I have got prizes. And what I'm thinking, it depends on the numbers, um, is there may be that I draw two winners and split these prizes. Uh, and if I do split them, then they will go together as one prize. Um, and then the bag and stitch markers will go. And I've also got another prize, which I'm going to tell you about in just a second. So just a quick reminder, we have got, I did look in my um, stash notes. This is a Shetland sock yarn. I know that much about it. So this is a Shetland sock yarn. Um, and this is a merino sock. Actually, no, no, it's just su uh, I don't know if it's merino. It's just superwash wool and nylon, uh, but in kind of Christmassy colours. So those two will go together. And then we have this bag from Amelia X Joy uh, that I bought from Etsy from her shop on Etsy. Um, and we have these stitch markers that um, are now on sale in my Etsy shop actually. I've already, I've had to restock them, stock them already actually. They, they didn't quite sell out, but I could see they were going quite quickly. So I've restocked, I've added to the stock already on these. And uh, I had a friend message me as well when she saw them on the podcast and she said, oh, can you put a couple of these aside for me? So, uh, so these stitch markers, so you get one coloured one coloured and I've got a choice of colours and then four more Christmas trees. So as I say, they are on Ravelry. No, not on Ravelry, on my Etsy shop. But you could win these. It's blowing out, isn't it? Anyway, so yeah, one set of those and the bag. And then I said last time I wanted to add a pattern to it. And I'm so daft sometimes because I suddenly remembered my friend Penny. So Penny uh, designed the Peas Blossom Shawl, uh, which I did a collaboration with her before. And I suddenly remembered that she had got a shawl that uh, was one of her first designs, I think she was her second design, um, called the Gingerbread House Shawl. And she designed it obviously for Christmas. It's called Gingerbread House Shawl. Um, and so the pattern for that is uh, on her pay hip and on Ravelry. And I've just got some notes about it on here. It is a DK weight shawl. I'm going to put some pictures into, I'll insert some pictures into the video. Okay, so you can see what it looks like. Um, and it's the gingerbread house shawl. And this is what, when she designed it, this is what she said about it. This top-down triangular shawl is inspired by the gingerbread houses that start to appear in shops and illustrations as we approach Christmas in the depths of winter. It evokes warm and snuggly feelings while also being a gentle knit. This shawl has a bit of a, has a, bit of a sense of fun with its lace house motifs and icing inspired border. Wearing it while enjoying a hot drink and some gingerbread or other seasonable snack is highly recommended. <clears throat> the pattern has been designed to be relatively straightforward as we all tend to be busy and stressed enough at this time of year without our knitting starting to cause us trouble too. Yeah, well, that could be said for any time of year, I think, at the moment. So, yes, so I'm going to, I'll post some pictures of that. Um, but basically, um, it's got like uh, the edge of the shawl 
before the border has got a lace motif of actually like gingerbread houses and then the border as she said she she did it in colors uh, the main part in like a gingerbread color and then she did like a creamy white border to like represent the ice Um, so that pattern will also be part of the giveaway as well um, and I will either be able to send it to you on Ravelry if you are a Ravelry user and you win but if you don't use Ravelry and you win then Penny and I said we will get a copy to you somehow probably just through email or something like that okay so yes so there is the project bag the stitch markers the two skeins of yarn and the pattern all part of the prizes and as I say it will either uh, it may, I think actually now looking at the numbers, because there are quite a lot of people who've joined in on Instagram as well, I will probably draw one for Instagram and that will be the stitch markers, the project bag <coughs> and, the shawl, and the shawl pattern will be one prize and then the other prize will be the two skeins of yarn. And of course if you want to enter on both that is fine, absolutely fine. The more you enter the more chances you've got, so the more times you tag a post. Uh, the only thing I'm saying is the what you tag does need to have some kind of link to Christmas or winter. Now I am being really really um, loose with that all right um, but please uh, make sure that it um, in one of your posts so even if if it's a post and it doesn't say it clearly in the post how it links to Christmas I'll go back onto your Instagram and if there are other posts uh, as long as somewhere it explains how it links to Christmas or winter in some way so that could be the name of the um, colorway it could be that the yarn was a Christmas gift to you it could be that you're using an advent set it could be um, that you are knitting something to give as a Christmas present or you are knitting something with like a, a winter pattern, snowflake, snowman, whatever, um, that you are going to, what else was I going to say? Oh, it's something that you're going to wear at Christmas. Okay, so, you know, I am being pretty generous on how it links to Christmas or winter, but please, um, if I pull up a post on Instagram and I can't see in any way how that item, that project connects at all to winter or Christmas, then, then, I, then I won't allow it. But like I say, if you've posted that project five or six times, and if I can see that, and then I can say, oh yes, I can see on the first time she posted that, she mentioned such and such, and that, that's fine. I, I'm happy to do that. Um, but yeah, I just don't want, you know, I don't know, don't post a picture of, uh, um, a bikini top <laughs> and there's no you know there's no no way I can work out how it's linked to Christmas or winter because that you know that's sort of not then really in the spirit of it uh, but other than that yeah so little like at Christmas in July make along um, so yeah really quickly because I'm at 55 minutes a little bit of um, shop news um, you can see up on here I've got most of my stock up here actually but I've got some new things just going in um into the shop so look out for some updates this is new uh, titania is back in stock um there will be a new range coming out for august for a new shakespeare play i won't tell you what that is yet but look out for that um, that was uh, the first yarns for that will come out in the first week of august i will be going away so my shop will be kind of on hold for a week you will be able to play I think I can set it up so you can place orders but it will give you a warning that I won't be able to post it until the <clears throat> end of that week. Um, advent calendars are also on sale um, on my shop. Um, I'm going to keep the orders open for advent calendars until either, the, uh, until either I sell out of my um, numbers that I've got in mind or um, probably the end of August I'll have to close it off anyway because um, I have to get those dyed up in August and ready to, to post in September, well, have them ready to pack up in September, etc. So, yeah, so um, if you're interested in my advent calendar, um, I've not really mentioned it on the podcast before, but if you take a look on my Etsy shop, uh, it'll tell you the details. It is all linked to A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. So if you're interested in that, take a look at my Etsy shop. I think next month as well, we're going to talk a little bit about how we could do an advent swap. So if people are 
I would like to have kind of like a, an advent calendar, but I uh, don't want to spend the money on one, and I understand that. Then I think next month we're going to talk about maybe how we can organise some little swaps uh, together so people can package and put together little um, advent calendar swaps that mean that you can get your own advent calendar, create your own in this way, um, and it's just going to cost you the price of postage to each other, if anyone's interested in that. Oh, and talking of things for next month, the other thing to look out for, this will be an Instagram, a bit of fun on Instagram. Um, it'll only be on Instagram because I can't see how I'd work it any other way. But there will be a little like act bingo, knitting bingo is going to be taking place in August. So watch out for that. I will be posting details about that next week in the run up to the beginning of August. Just a bit of fun, um, but hopefully if people want to join in on that, that's going to be um, a, a good little uh, project that we can all join in on. So I will post information about that next week. Maybe if I get time, I'll do a separate little Instagram and a separate um, YouTube video explaining what that's about. I'll see if I can do that. Actually, I could do like a little five minute video that I could pop on Instagram and onto YouTube just explaining about the little like hack bingo for August. So yeah. Okay, lots that I've just rushed through at the end there. Please do take a look at uh my other videos if this is the, your first time um i hope you've enjoyed what you've seen it feels like it's been a bit manic i've got notes down here you wouldn't think it would you because i'm all like jumping all over the place um but yes yeah, so i hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please do take a look at some of my previous videos um and maybe see some of these works uh these finished objects how they started where they came from or if you want to find out more information about any of them or myself um, if you watch me but you're not already a subscriber, um, please consider subscribing. You'll get a notification if you click on the bell. You'll get a notification to say when I've set up something else. But yeah, thank you very much for joining me. Um, and uh, I'm just trying to remember if I need to do any shout outs to anybody. Um, I know that. Uh, no, I don't think so. I thank you to a couple of people who have mentioned me in their podcasts the last couple of weeks, which has been lovely. Uh, Amanda on, oh no, mouse. I want to say little mouse, but it's not little mouse. I'll put it down here anyway. But her podcast, I know she's knitting a jumper for the Christmas in July make along. Um, Ruth loves to knit. She's got a make-along for shawls. So if you're doing Christmas shawl or anything like that, um, you could double dip that into my make-along and hers. So that's Ruth loves to knit. I'm just trying to think. Stitch Create, Stitch Create Love has got um, some advent kits coming out for stitch markers, I think it is. She's been working um, on that recently. So give her podcast a look or have a look in her Etsy shop as well. But yeah, I think that's most of my shout outs. But all right, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it's been lovely, lovely to chat. And I will see you all not in quite two weeks, just over two weeks time. And if you want to see me in person, pop along to Newark Market on um, Sunday the 25th of July, Saturday the 21st of August. Um, I will be there on both those dates. All right, happy knitting everyone. Bye.